Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Ask Brixie, where I answer some of the most commonly asked questions here on my channel. If you want your question to be featured in a future Ask Brixie video, make sure you fire that question down in the comment section below. First question from KCM, who's a member here on my channel. Thank you so much for becoming a member. He says, Brixie, what was your first creator expert set? Well, my first ever creator expert set was actually the London Tower Bridge. And it was a huge set with a huge piece count. However, the most significant and memorable first ever Creator Expert set was actually one of these guys right here, which of course are the modular buildings. This is my favorite modular building of all time because it got me into building a Lego city. It's the detective's office right there. Such an awesome modular building with so many hidden Easter eggs, also a pool table and a barber shop and many other features. By far, my favorite Lego Creator Expert set because it essentially led to this, which is the Lego City. Excellent question, Casey. My first one was the London Tower Bridge, but the most memorable one was for sure the Lego modular building known as the Detective's Office. Do you think Lego will ever do a thousand dollar set? Well, I guess it depends on what currency you're talking. If you're talking here in Canadian dollars, I think for sure they're gonna be doing a thousand dollar set. Now the most expensive set right now, or the most expensive set that they've ever issued, is the UCS Millennium Falcon. This set right here has a suggested retail price of $899.95 here in Canada, making it the most expensive set they have ever released. But will they ever do a thousand dollar set? Yes, I think they will. In fact, it's a rumor right now in the LEGO universe that they're going to be issuing a 9,000 piece Roman Colosseum. And if that is the case, I think that set could potentially be over that $1,000 Canadian price point. I could be wrong though. Hopefully I am wrong because I'd prefer it not be $1,000. However, I'm still on the fence as I haven't decided if I'm actually gonna pick that one up if the rumor is real. Goofy Bricks asks, what is your biggest Lego buying regret? It's actually funny that you asked this question because it actually ties into the first question that you asked from Casey M. My biggest regret was actually the London Tower Bridge. Not that I think it's a terrible set and not that I don't like it. It's because I think it was the third set that I ever purchased. And I think what really sold me on that set was the uh, price per piece, which really doesn't mean that much in the grand scheme of things because it came with a lot of small pieces and it was very repetitive to build. And the only reason I regretted getting it was because it was in the early stage of me collecting Lego. Like I said, it was the third set that I ever purchased. And at the time there was many other great sets that I could have got instead of that. So for that reason, I sort of had a little bit of buyer's remorse after building that one there because we could have got things like the Ewok Village, uh, Red 5, uh, more modular buildings or anything like that. Not to say that I don't have them already, but early on in my Lego career, I bought that set because of the amount of pieces that it came with but I later regretted it as I could have allocated my funds toward different cooler sets that were more up my alley because am I really a fan of the London Tower Bridge? Yes, I think it's really cool, but am I a bigger fan of the Ewok Village? Yes, yes I am. Other sets that I regret buying are actually in this toe tier. There's a bunch of smaller sets that were all busted up at a garage sale and I probably shouldn't have got them. Not that I don't want them, they're just sort of a mishmash of sets that are really small sets that I don't really collect and don't display well here in the Lego room. I like big cohesive stuff and some of these garage sale buys that I do, whether it's bulk Lego or broken sets, don't really display well here on the shelves in the Lego room. So that's probably the only other sets that I regret buying. But do I really regret buying the London Tower Bridge? No, not really, because it showed me some great building techniques it held its value and I later sold it for essentially the exact same price that I bought it for. And I had the fun of building it and displaying it for a number of years and then later sold it for the same price. So that's a really cool thing. You can't really regret buying any Lego because all Lego holds its value. And if you regret buying it, just sell it for what you paid for it or maybe slightly less and you get the enjoyment of building it. So no, I don't really regret buying any of the Lego sets that I've ever purchased. A really quick and easy one here to answer from Alex Newman. It says, do you watch hockey? If so, I hope you support the Oilers. If not, what team? Haha. <laughs> well, I definitely do watch hockey and I do support the Oilers. I am a huge hockey fan. I love the game. However, once the Oilers are out of the playoff race, well, not the playoff race, but out of the playoffs or don't make it to the playoffs, I stop watching it. I just don't have enough time 
uh, to watch other teams or more games than what the Oilers already participated in because it's just a huge time suck. And I would rather be building Lego with you guys here on my channel. MIC or Mike Studios states, who else would love to be in Brixie's house looking at his Lego sets? One thing I will say is I wish that this world was a better place and I would offer that as like a membership perk or something like that. And I would let people come into my basement here and check everything out. But unfortunately, I just can't do that. However, I do have plans in the future and actually have a business plan that I've started working on. I would like to have my Lego room or all of my Lego sets in my city off-site somewhere. And I would love to invite fans of my channel and fans of Lego into that off-site studio and show you guys everything that we have here and maybe build together. But that's all I'm going to say about that. It is a plan of mine in the future that I would love to have an off-site place and invite you to come check out the Brixie Studio. Voimit Plays asks, how did you collect all your Lego? Well, slowly but surely, just sort of went to the Lego store, Toys R Us, or Amazon, and just sort of slowly but surely collected all of the Lego. Uh, I just used the wages that I earned and bought the Lego. And sometimes I got lucky on a, a local classified score like Facebook Buy Sell or Kijiji where you can score things at good prices. And that's just how I did it, just slowly over time, just accumulated Lego. And now I have all of this Lego. So yeah, I just sort of essentially worked and traded my, my working wage for, for Lego through uh, suggested retailers like lego.com, Amazon, or uh, Toys R Us here in Canada. Pretty simple there, I just sort of bought it all, I guess. Sorry that I can't pronounce your name and I don't want to get it wrong, says, what kind of thing will be in your bigger LEGO city? Well, let's have a quick look at the LEGO city and the progress we've made in the last little while here and where we plan to go from there. First off, we're going to talk about bigger things. Things that will grow are the Avengers Tower, the Hospital, the Office Tower, the Sig Tower, Diagon Alley once they give us more sets, and we're also going to add more detail there. There's going to be vendors all along the street where those trucks are. There's going to be vendors right here. Vendors right here to hide the other side of Diagon Alley. Platform nine and three quarters here along with more magical vendors here. We're going to improve this significantly with a grand entrance and parking lot and also a go-kart track over here. There's going to be a large park right here. The train yard is going to become a lot more detailed. There's going to be a large industrial boat dock over here along with Pirates of Barracuda Bay and an Ninjago Island. We're going to hang all this art here. We're going to fill all the available space along the tops of the shelves. We're going to build an epic beach here full of activity and beach huts. And that go-kart track is going to go around this roller coaster and come down through here just behind that cliff edge there. And much more. So as you can see, we have lots of plans for the Lego room and also the Lego city. Orion has an interesting statement. He says, I wish Lego would have a yearly thing where they can have customers vote for which retired sets they want to be reissued. What are your thoughts on that, good or bad? I've got mixed feelings about this. Um, I think what you've stated is, is correct. I think customers should be able to vote on what sets are reissued. And there should also be a vote saying, no, don't reissue this set. They are reissuing things like the ship in the bottle and also the Saturn V. And they have done things in the past like the Taj Mahal. Now, with that said, uh, it's sort of a 50-50 thing because people that didn't get those sets and want those sets can now officially get those sets again at suggested retail prices. People who put those sets away as investments, their investments are going to go down substantially. So I don't know. It's sort of a gray area. I don't know if they should be doing that, but definitely if they are doing that, then they should offer customers the opportunity to vote or they should change it enough like the UCS Millennium Falcon or the new at, -AT walkers or all the different at, -AT walkers that have evolved over the years. They should add enough stuff or take away enough stuff or change the set enough so that it's substantially different from the set that was already issued. So if they were to reissue, I don't know, Cafe Corner, they should put an interior to make it substantially different than the existing Cafe Corner. Does that mean they should reissue Cafe Corner? No, no, I don't think they should. But if they, that's just an example, but if they are to reissue sets, they should make them substantially different. So they're not the same set. And maybe they should let us vote on it to a certain extent to tell them if it's a good idea or not. Because I think it's sort of a 50-50 thing right now with Lego collectors in the Lego market. I don't know. It's a tough one, Orion. It's a really good question though. Super Skills123 asks, what was my second set? 
Well, that actually brings us back over here into this quadrant of the Lego room where I've set up a new Batman display. We've got the Batwing and the 1989 Batmobile. And right below it is my second ever set. It's the Batman Tumbler. This thing is a beauty. See, my third set, I think, was the London Tower Bridge. My second set was this. I much prefer this set over the London Tower Bridge. So that's why I sort of regret buying the London Tower Bridge because there are so many great options that I could have went with besides that set. Something like this, which is absolutely epic and of course comes with the Heath Ledger Joker minifigure and the plaque right there. That's the second set that I've ever bought. Brick Maniac asks, Brixie, have you ever thought of making a space theme hanging from the Lego City when it's done? So essentially he's asking me, would I ever consider hanging space theme sets from the ceiling? Once upon a time, I had airplanes suspended from the ceiling in the old Lego room. And he's asking me if I would ever hang space-themed sets. The only three space-themed sets that I have is the Lunar Lander, the ISS, and the Saturn V. Would I ever hang those? Probably not. And would I use my airspace to hang space sets? Unfortunately not. If I ever were to hang sets, it would definitely be the low flyers, like the airplanes again. And I'd find a way to have the fishing line hook into the pot lights and come down because I do not want to put screws or holes into my brand new roof that I just had drywalled. I just can't do it. In the old house I could because it was an older house and I didn't care about the ceiling tiles, but in this house I just had this basement renovated and I do not want to start punching holes in walls. That's why we haven't put these guys up yet either. Sat Aurora asks, are you planning on doing speed build videos? I used to do speed build videos and I'm going to tell you why I stopped. I found when I did a speed build video, I really wanted to get through that set in one sitting. So I wasn't able to spread that set out over a number of days or a number of building sessions. Also, I found that I was more concentrated and more worried about the video than the actual enjoyment of building that set. So I didn't get as much enjoyment out of the set itself. And now I build all of my stuff live and I do it with you guys here on my YouTube channel, which is really fun. However, when I'm building live, I don't know why I don't have my time-lapse GoPro going because then we could get a speed build out of it because I'm already building it anyway. I don't know why I don't focus the camera or one of my other cameras on the time-lapse portion of it while we're live building. So it's a good su suggestion. I just gotta buy another tripod so that we could maybe set up a different angle uh, with the time-lapse camera on while we're live building. But if you haven't checked out my live builds, I'd recommend it. And thanks for asking the question and maybe sparking a new idea here that I might actually follow through with if I'm not too much of a procrastinator. So yeah, maybe we'll see some uh, speed builds in the very near future. Thank you for your question. Patricia asked a really good question here and I honestly don't think I have an answer for it. As technology is rising, how will Lego change in the future? I don't know. Like, they're already surprising me is the thing. Like, I don't know how they can possibly build better things. Roller coasters, drop rides, pianos that play music, Bluetooth trains and Bluetooth power functions. All of these magnificent things that I didn't even think they could do with LEGO, they seem to be doing it. So how could they possibly change as technology changes? I have no idea. They're doing so many things. Also, Mario. Mario interacts with the app and stuff like that. I honestly, you stumped me, Patricia. I don't know if you guys have an answer to this question or, or let me know by commenting below in the, in the comment section and, and let me know what you think LEGO is going to do as technology advances over the next decade. I have no idea where LEGO is going to go from here. Like, have they reached their peak? I don't know. I don't know. What other... Like, I think they're just going to pick up more themes and more properties to make even cooler and better Lego sets on? I don't know where they can take it from here. It's, it's, a, it's a really hard question to ask. Thank you for stumping me. Now I'm gonna not sleep as well tonight because I'm gonna be thinking about that question. Iceman asks, what do you think about Lego sets where there's a tint difference, uh, the piano and so on, and why is there a sudden problem? I don't know why there's a sudden problem. I never knew the piano had a problem with tint difference. The only set in my collection that has a tint difference is the uh, Lamborghini Sienna, I believe. You can really see it in the uh, spoiler right here. See the green difference right there? That's what we're talking about in regards to tint difference. Does it really bother me? No, not really, because the Sienna just sitting here 
It's not rolling anywhere. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, I get it. Uh, but it's not going anywhere. It's just here for display. So the only time it's really going to bother me is when I'm like, woo, way up close to it. But when I'm way back here, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. But why do I think this problem is happening all of a sudden? I don't know. I guess maybe just part dyes and machines and different colors of plastic. But I don't know. That'd be a good question for Lego to say what the heck's going on here. I don't know. Questions from Stacy and John sort of line up with one another. Stacy says, how does Jose react when she sees that you came home with a bunch of sets? And John says, my wife and in-laws are not very fond of me getting Legos, but I love them and wish I had more of them. <laughs> well, honestly, if you're a collector of Lego, you always love them and you'll always wish that you had more of them. Uh, what does my wife think? My wife is very supportive of my Lego hobby. Obviously, I'm fortunate enough and I've worked really hard to turn my Lego hobby into a career. Um, so I have an excuse. No, and I'm doing it for the channel. I'm doing it for the channel. But really, I'm just a huge fan of Lego. I'm not doing it for the channel. I'm doing it because I love Lego. So she is okay with it um, as long as we have enough money to survive and pay the bills. And John, your in-laws, maybe just try and get them into Lego. You know, maybe just push a little set on them once in a while and maybe get them to build it with you or something so they can realize how awesome lego is and how life-changing it can actually be there's my advice to you good sir thank you for your questions oh wow so that's that's the last one we ended on a funny one <laughs> thank you uh john and also stacy for uh, giving me a little chuckle there so i hope i answered all of your questions as best i can today remember if you have any questions for me make sure you throw them in the comment section below in this video and I'm going to do my best to answer those questions in the next Ask Brixie. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.